Welcome to St. Bridget Church. We are glad to have you join us in worshiping the Lord. The Knights of Columbus are putting on a Bowl for Life at B&B Bowl in Loves Park on Friday, January 26th at 6 p.m. The cost is $10 for dinner or $25 for both. Tickets will be sold at the door. The Knights of Columbus are sponsoring a pancake breakfast today after this 10 o'clock Mass. There will be hot dogs after the 11.30 Mass. A 24-hour rosary to end abortion will be held on Monday, January 22nd. Sign-ups will be this weekend after Masses. There will be a fish fry volunteer meeting on Sunday, January 28th at 1 p.m. in Classroom A at Mitchell Center. Our main celebrant is Father Browning, and this Mass is being offered for the people of St. Bridget. Please join in singing number 233, Praise to the Lord, number 233. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess oh, to Almighty God, God <coughs> and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and in what I have done. done in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready, and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city, and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil he threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, those having wives should act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, and those using the world as not using it fully. For the world, in its present form, is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm always fascinated with how to understand the gospel better, to try to get into those, the shoes of first century Jewish people uh, because they were drawn to Jesus' message. One of the things Jesus says throughout all the gospels and very often is he talks about the kingdom of God or in Matthew, the kingdom of heaven, they're synonymous. But he's always talking about the kingdom of God. Now. Everything that Jesus does is a fulfillment of what was prophesied uh, he, or what happened in the Old Testament. He, like, he takes up all of Israel's life and does it perfectly because Israel, like us, failed often. And so what does it mean when he says the kingdom of God is at hand? This is the time of fulfillment. The Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures don't speak of the kingdom of God very often. As a matter of fact, really only in one place, in the book of Daniel, chapter 2. And it's really cool. Well, I think it is, so hopefully you do. But this is where this phrase comes from, and this is why Jesus uses it. So if you go back to the book of Daniel, uh, Daniel is an Israelite that's under the rule of the Babylonians. All right, so King Nebuchadnezzar, by the way, awesome name, right? Even though he's kind of a villain a bit, but a pretty awesome name, Nebuchadnezzar. I'd probably name a kid Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> and he would hate me forever. Um, but so, so King Nebuchadnezzar has this dream and Daniel is a great interpreter of dreams. And the dream goes something like this. The king has this vision of a great statue that has four different parts to it. The head, is gold. The torso is silver, the midsection is bronze, the legs are iron, that, that the, and then goes into the feet as, as clay. And so what happens in the dream is this rock, uh, not cut by human hand, it says, taken from a mountain, uh, signal there, you know, supernatural, God at work. This little rock cut from a mountain by no human hand is thrown at this statue and this statue crumbles and blows away in the wind. And so he brings in Daniel to say, what does this dream mean? What is going on in this dream? And so Daniel explains it as four different kingdoms. So we have the, the kingdom that Nebuchadnezzar is the king of, uh, the Babylonians are the head of gold. And then there'll come another kingdom that takes down the Babylonians, which ends up being the Persian kingdom, Assyrians, and it's uh, the silver. And then another kingdom will come, the Greeks, and they will take down the Persians and they will take over the known world. And they are the uh, bronze. And then this fourth kingdom, and he says when this fourth kingdom takes over, this kingdom of iron and clay feet, uh, this kingdom will be the one where this rock will come in and begin to grow. So this kingdom is the Roman Empire, right? This is the time of Jesus. All of the Israelites knew this. They were waiting for the kingdom. They knew, according to Daniel's timeline, that this was the kingdom in which God would break into the world and bring his kingdom. And so that rock that is thrown, that crushes all these other four kingdoms, begins to grow into this great mountain that stretches throughout the world. This is the kingdom of God. So when Jesus says, this is the time of fulfillment, he's talking about this prophecy. 
He's saying that prophecy of Daniel, that the kingdom of God would break in during this reign of the fourth kingdom, it's now. And I am bringing about the kingdom of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Actually, you could translate that kingdom of God is present right here to you, close to you, because Jesus himself inaugurates the kingdom in his very person. And what do you, how do you enter the kingdom? Repent and believe in this good news. Repent and believe that God is fulfilling his promise to take down all the kingdoms of sin, the kingdoms of injustice, of slavery, and to bring his kingdom into the world. What is the greatest, though, slavery that God wants to get rid of? The slavery to sin. God comes and brings his kingdom, which will begin to conquer all of those things that keep us enslaved. Sin, the fear of death, all these things, Jesus brings about God's kingdom to take down. So he speaks of the kingdom of God throughout. If we get what it means by looking at this prophecy as Jesus fulfills it, the rest of the gospel that we'll read throughout this year of Mark is about what the kingdom looks like, how it becomes part of our life, how it takes over the world, because that's what's most important, that we enter the kingdom. That's why these apostles are so quick to drop everything. They know the prophecy. They know what's coming. They've seen and already heard of Jesus. They met him last week in John's gospel down in Jerusalem. Uh, and this is a little later on up in Galilee. So when Jesus says, the time of fulfillment is now, I'm calling you four to begin with me, uh, they drop everything. They drop their, all their livelihood. They even leave their father behind because this is the kingdom of God breaking into the world. That transforms everything. What does it mean for us, though? And I was, as I was praying with this, I, I thought of the, the kingdom of God, this small rock. It also means the church, right? Because Jesus is the beginning of that kingdom. And his body, his mystical body, the church, goes throughout the whole world. There's not a place on this planet that we haven't touched as the church of Christ. And so his grace, his sacraments, faith, flows through his body, the church, and brings about the kingdom of God in each one of our lives, if we let him, and every person's life, if they let him. And so how do we do that today? I think we've all got, uh, you know, maybe you've been like me, you have these like awesome times of prayer and conversion, like you're, maybe you have a great Lent or a great Advent, and then all of a sudden afterwards, it's kind of like, oh, just kind of start slipping away and wandering away or, or sliding off and everything feels a little different. And maybe we give up just a little bit and then we get back into it and then we give up just a little bit. The ebb and flow of the difficulty of living in the kingdom. Uh, so maybe we've all had that. And I think part of the problem is that like that dream, we begin to let idols, uh, these idols get built up in our life. The idol of, which is very popular in our world today, that if I just had a little bit m more money, then I'd be happy. Or if I just had that bigger house or that different car, then I'd be happy. All these other things that pop into our mind. If I had a better job, if my boss wasn't a jerk, if I had better kids that didn't yell at me all the time, then I'd be happy, right? We've got all these, these issues that keep us from being happy. If we just took care of those, or if they just changed, then I'd be happy. All of that's a lie. <laughs> it never, that nothing ever brings about happiness in the material world or even in that. The key is, will we let that rock that was cut out of the mountain as by no human hand, meaning supernatural, that rock of grace destroy our, those idols that we set up in our life and become the center of our life? to begin to grow, to expand, so that it covers every area of our life. Will the kingdom of God affect our marriage, our relationships, our work, our family, our prayer life, our, our social life? Will we let it affect every aspect of our life? Because that's when we begin to experience the kingdom values that Jesus brings. This peace, this joy that remains even during difficult times, even during suffering, that we recognize that we're on a solid foundation of this mountain, 
this rock of grace that's grown into a mountain in our life, that nothing can steal this away. I am completely and interiorly free to believe, to hope, and to love God at all moments. There's nothing that can take that away from me. That's what it means, I think, to let the kingdom break in today. To repent of all those idols that we've allowed to be set up in our life that maybe we've just fallen into. You know, there's all kinds of ways that that happens. But to repent of those and to believe that God wants to break into every aspect of our life and to transform it. That's what it means to let the kingdom of God take root in our heart. And the other thing is, Jesus wants an immediate answer, doesn't he? He doesn't want us to wait till tomorrow to say yes to this. He wants us to do it now. He wants us to drop all of those nets, to drop everything that keeps us from coming to him and go and follow him this moment. That's the beauty of the gospel today, that Jesus wants us to choose him now. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, unsubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess from baptism for forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Let us turn to our good and loving Father in heaven and ask him to hear and answer our prayers. That the church will ever more fervently in proclaiming the kingdom of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That in a world torn by strife, God's people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That Christians and other religious minorities in Asia countries may be able to practice their faith in full freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That many young people will respond to Christ's call to follow him in the consecrated life and in the priesthood, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who experience anguish or sorrow in their lives, that the Lord will relieve their burdens and give them joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For public servants, May God grant them humility, wisdom, and courage to defend all human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious Father, we bring these prayers to you in faith and ask that you hear and answer them if they're in accord with your most holy will. For we offer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing number 101, Be Thou My Vision, number 101.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, <coughs> Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks Please join in singing our closing song, number 183, Let All Things Now Living, number 183.